Hi, my name is Rick. Um, I have a Samsung LCD TV, 46 inch. It's the LN46A530. And I'm having the intermittent problems with trying to turn the TV on. It's clicking, makes noise, and then it takes forever and eventually comes on. I'm suspecting it's a um, power supply problem. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take the TV apart. So what I would suggest is find yourself a flat surface, a bench or something. And this is going to eventually get wall mounted. So I'm going to go ahead and take the stand off. But you got to take the stand off to get in the back anyway. So what you have here is you have these screws here. One, two, three, four. And I believe Samsung's marked it with an S. And I'm assuming that means stand. So you go ahead and take those four out and the stand pulls right off. Now around the perimeter you're going to see a bunch of screws. Looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and the last one is twelve. After you've removed those other ones, you can go ahead and remove the perimeter ones around the base. I will do that and I'll hold this. Okay, all the screws have been removed all the way around. Now, I noticed one thing with this particular TV. Uh, it's heavy trying to pick it up from the back side. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it over because most of your heavier components are going to be on where the uh, power board is and, and motherboard is. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this upside down. Okay, now the back is removed. Um, keep in mind, Samsung has four bolts on the back side there. They're larger ones. And they're mainly for if you're going to be uh, mounting this on a wall. If you don't have the mount on and you have a stand on it, then those four bolts have to come out of there because they're holding the back panel on. So once you remove them, it'll pop right off. Pull down from the top and don't, uh, don't try to pry it with a lot of pressure. It should wiggle free. Now here's the power supply right there. You see all the heat sinks on there and then you'll see a cluster of capacitors. That's them right there. And what I originally thought, and now that I'm looking at it, I don't know if it's focusing good enough, but hopefully you can see that right there. These two right here look like they have like a magic marker, black marker on top. That's not. That's that uh, electrolytic uh, fluid, I believe it's called. And that's coming out, so they burst. Um, they haven't completely blown apart, which is why the TV was like short cycling. It would go on and go off. Um, but they definitely have to be replaced. That's the issue. I've looked around the rest of the board. I don't see anything else. It seems to be a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove all these wires that you see connected to the motherboard. And from everything I've read online, if you disconnect this TV for about 24 hours, then some of these larger capacitors like those right there will deplete their energy and you won't get shocked um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that I'm gonna pull the wires out and then uh, we'll get back to this video when I pull the board okay so these are the items we're gonna need this is the board of course we've already pulled it out and these are the two capacitors that are bursting at the top and we're going to replace those. Now those are 25V 820UFs with a 105 degree Celsius temperature. What's happening with these boards? They could be Vizio, Samsung, whatever. I mean they're all kind of made by the same uh, same people to be honest with you these heat sinks are getting too hot apparently and they're they're pushing too much heat into the capacitors which is blowing them 
they're only able to handle a certain amount of temperature. So we're going to go ahead and replace these. Go ahead and flip the board over. Put your finger right here where the ones are that you're going to try to replace and that will give you an idea of where the solder marks are. But also if you look on your board it will give you a designation like these are CM8 seven six and cm881 so when you come over here on the other side of your board if you look at it i know you can't see it but it'll say cm876 and cm881 so those are the ones we're going to replace so what you're going to need is you're going to need some regular rubbing alcohol some q-tips and i use a uh a flux cord radio shack light duty rosin core solder and soldering iron I use the Weller SP 80L and I'm gonna go ahead because uh, I'm filming this by myself and uh, I can't do two things here so I've gone and I've got the replacement capacitors and I'm going to put in, had a bunch of these laying around, and I checked out online and the specs are okay. 1000 UF, 25 volt. A little bit of overkill. I know it's probably going to be jammed on the board a little bit, but I got like 50 of them laying around. I'm going to go ahead and use them. But typically what you want to do is you want to stay, you can go up a little bit in, in voltage, which is what you want to do. But the UF you want to kind of try to stay the same. Um, if you got, you know, sometimes you can't find them, you can go up a little bit, but just don't uh, go overkill like uh, a couple hundred UF above what uh, you had on your board. All right, so we'll go ahead and do this and then we'll come back. Okay, well, here's a tip um, I removed the two capacitors, uh, you use them, they'll come right out with like a uh, rocking motion. Now, here's the new one's coming in. If you see that bold silver stripe on there, if you look at the board right there, there's a shaded area with like a little little block area on the back. That's going to be the negative side. Now, when you look at these capacitors, there's a short side and a long side. The short side is going to be your negative. So that shaded area is your negative also. Now, what I found when you try to take the capacitors off, you start heating them. Don't be afraid of it. You start heating them, you're going to want to do a rocking motion. Whatever way the, the leads are going, if they're going in this direction, you want to rock that way. If they're going in this direction, you want to rock that way. So as you're applying heat to the other side, the underside, actually I have the board upside down now, I'm just showing you. When you start to wiggle it, you'll see it's getting loose. So pop one side out and then move to the other connector and then pop the other side out and they'll pop right off. All right, let me go ahead and solder these up. Okay, the capacitors are soldered on the board now. I know it looks kind of funny because they're on an angle, but it'll be fine. All right, proof's in the pudding. Let's go ahead and install it into the TV, and we'll find out what happens. Okay. All right, this is the final install. The motherboard is here. Here's the power supply is installed. Make sure all the cables are put back. You got to make sure that these are all plugged in. Make sure your power cord is plugged in. All the ribbon cables are plugged in and the board's secure. Now, we're going to go ahead and spin it around. I haven't put the back on yet cuz I want to make sure that the mother the uh, power supply is good. Okay, and spin this around. All right. There we go. And we'll get the remote and we'll see what happens. TV. Power. No, it clicked. And we've got to the video screen. There it is. HDMI cable, set top box, new time information. Check the signal because it's not plugged in. All right, thanks a lot. Um, I hope that helps you with the uh, Put new capacitors on your board.
Thank you.